Hello, hello, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. I have the most spectacular day for you. So I hope you have your coffee ready and paper and pencil. Um, type in in the chat, open the chat below and the Q&A panel. Type in where you are. Kim is going to pop up a poll as we as people assemble. And you can put any questions in the Q&A. We will be looking at your questions and the team of six VIPs will be uh, answering. So first of all, I'm Lila Rogers. I'm an art agent. I've been an art agent for three decades and I love to teach and mentor. That's what I love, creatives. I've taught over 30,000 students in a hundred plus countries, crazy, at the Make Art That Sells platform. I It was founded in 2013 with my creative genius and author of five books, Beth Campton. I hope she's blushing right now. We'll be chat I'll be chatting with her about creative entrepreneurship and her course. Here's why I understand the process of creative success and how to get there. I started out in 1976, graduating from art school and I was confused and I was lost and try, all I wanted was just to make a living making pictures. It's all I wanted so much. And I did figure it out. And I became a successful illustrator in, for about a decade or so in New York with clients like Vogue Magazine, New York Times, the Grammys. I won awards. So I learned the process and I think it makes me a better teacher. Um, so then I became an agent in 1994. So I've been doing that almost three decades and I love it because I'm mentoring. I'm gonna give you a hot tip later about how my agency is morphing a little too in a very cool way. Hello everybody in the chat. So good to see so many familiar faces. Uh, we are live on Facebook. Thank you, Kim, for telling me. Welcome to those of you joining on Facebook. Here's what I know as an agent. This is why I love teaching classes because as an agent, I see every day the jobs we assign, the deals we make. I see which artists do well, which ones do spectacularly and why. I see what markets are hot and it changes. It's changed over 30 years. It's a great time for creatives. Um, I, but here's the thing that I think is pretty cool. I find my students, in the old days, I found artists to represent, they'd email. But over the past several years, I've been getting them almost exclusively through my courses. So it's a great opportunity for you to get in front of me as an agent and my co-teachers who also commission and assign and so forth. Why do I take students from my course? Because I get to see you develop, evolve. I get to see you improve. I get to see you do incredible work in the markets that are the hottest for assigning work, the most lucrative. I'm going to tell you a secret too. Other agents look around at Matt's students' work and take on artists from my classes. And that's fine, there's enough for everyone. I want all of you to be successful, make money, thrive. That is why I'm here on this planet. Um, okay, so here's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna lead you on, with so much goodness, I'm like freaking out. I'm going to lead you on a creative short written exercise. I'm going to chat with our six experts. They're going to give us our top tips. My co-teachers, I do teach all the classes, but I was lucky to be able to bring in my favorite experts to co-teach with me. So you're going to meet them if you don't know them. T uh, your top tips on illustration, on creative entrepreneurship, home decor, picture book writing and illustrating, toy and game pitching, diversity in your work and the people that you draw, 
and more. And we're going to do a giveaway of each course with our funny little game we do, guessing game. Riley is so lovely. He agreed to do, I texted him this morning, will you do an improv? an improv inventing. So he's gonna do a little improv inventing and you get to see how to invent a toy, which are very art driven. It's, it's so much about the art. You'll be amazed. It's easier than you think. I'm going to do a career tarot on a volunteer. That's my little, who was there and saw my one, uh, I think last week with, uh, oh my God, that was incredible. Who did I do? Pam Lott. Remember that? Pam, are you here? Oh my God, she's extraordinary. She lived off the grid for 13 years. This is a Matt student. And anyway, so I guided her that way. Experts will take questions today. The giveaway, as I said, make sure you fill out the poll. So you're probably here for a number of reasons. Let me see if I have it right. You've never taken a maths course before. Maths is make art that sells. And you wanna know what all the fuss is about. You hear about it, people keep coming back. You've seen the quality of work that's so unbelievable. And you're like, what is this deal? You've read the success stories maybe in our newsletters or seen them. You want in, you wanna know about it. And you wanna know which maths course to take or bundle because of our big sale, which ends tomorrow. So this is, you're in the right place to find out which courses are right for you. Maybe you've taken my courses before and you wanna figure out which one to sign up for next. Maybe you're just really ready to ramp up your art and writing career and get serious and wanna figure out what your next steps are, what courses. Here's the thing with my courses, okay? You learn from experts who love to teach. They're great teachers. People can know a lot, but if they can't teach, it's not so effective. They're great. It's super structured, very nicely structured. And I understand the creative brain. So I work with you to motivate you and trick you into doing your best work. It's for all levels, all levels. In the live courses, I want to emphasize this, the live courses, we have self-paced and we have live. In the live, one of the things we're doing more and more that the students love are breakout rooms of like three of your fellow students and their rules about being nice, which everyone is because math students are the nicest in the world, unbiased. Um, and you can chat about what you're working on and so forth in like 10 minutes. People love those. We have also the Facebook group that is just for math students. Really, really a wonderful and supportive place. You will see working professionals in there and people who have just left accounting to try to draw and everybody supports everybody. That's, that's how I do things and that's how we go. In the live courses too, there's a review I do a weekly review. So you're going to learn how I, and if I have a co-teacher, how we review work, how we see work, what we look for, what we think is good and strong. And you will learn from that. We only review a selection of pieces. Not everyone gets reviewed because that would be 10 hours long, but you still learn a ton. Um, you can get all the details in how am I doing, Becky? Am I hitting all the notes? And Jenny or people that Matt's. This is the guide. Who's got the spring sale guide? You can get a copy at the homepage at Make Art That Sells. And what I want to show you is the goodness in there. We're trying to make it a little more of a magazine format, a little more fun. So this is a Zoe and Lilla worksheet on creating fabulous characters. It's actually taken from illustrating children's books, one of our most popular classes. The children's book market, I'll get to this later, is the hottest market for illustration. One of, so strong, so cool, so much, so progressive and about all good things, diversity, kindness, humor, everything. 
Then we have a page in the guide, my tree. This is a little worksheet for you on your hopes and dreams. Back by popular demand, the armadillo of your career guide goals. A student gallery. We have a few pages of that to and let you know which class the pieces were made in. And then we have um, also an, another worksheet to help you figure out which bundle to take, more pretty stuff and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'm gonna give you three tips of mine. I'm gonna give you a little short writing exercise and then we'll get to meet our VIPs, my co-teachers. First of all, tip number one, I hope you have paper and pencil ready. As I always say, write this down. Make work you love. Make work that you love. Make the kind of work for the jobs you want to get. Don't dumb down hoping that by being more commercial, you'll get more work. Don't be more commercial for the sake of being commercial. Learn about the market, what it needs, what it wants, and then bring you to it. Authenticity is so needed, whether you're writing a picture book or putting art on a, this is by one of my artists, on a picture or illustrating anything in the world. So be you. Art directors want what you can do, not what can be done easily in-house. They want that unusual, special, unique thing. Number two, and this is something I'd practice, don't do creative work when you're tired. You wanna know why? Type in why. Because not only is your work not gonna be your best, but the little judgy monsters come out. Oh, this sucks, I'm not good, I can't do this. What am I thinking? I'm gonna, I want a career in art? What am I, nuts? Is this, but when you work during your best energy, your, what I call your inner jester, just came up with that, by the way, your inner jester will come out and be delighted, delightful and inspired. You'll feel inspired. Yes. So that's a tip. And if you do your work during your best energy, your work will be consistently strong. You will have a better career and longevity. Look, I've been in this racket for four decades, 40 years as a creative. And working out is not my favorite thing. I prefer to sit around and, you know, I don't know, crochet or something. But you have to stay healthy and so you have your best energy. I want you to have a long creative career. Number three, last tip, learn from experts. Learn from experts in the top creative markets. You need to keep learning. That's how you get better. That's how you make work, your work stronger. And you'll have more tools in your toolkit. The more tools you have in your toolkit, the more variety of work you can do. You can do a moody scene. You can do a vivid scene. You can do a piece for a children's book page or a like line, a collection of fabric. You are able to create more. You understand design, color, drawing, texture. What did I forget? All the good things, lettering. So the more tools you have, the better your work's going to be. Okay, that makes sense. Anybody relate to that? Okay, good. So now we're going to do an exercise, and then we're going to meet our our VIPs. So here's your exercise piece of paper. Imagine we've done this before, but I'm ad I'm adding to it. Okay, and also. This is good to do like all the time. I do it a lot personally. Imagine you get an email, you open up your laptop, it's like early maybe, and or your phone, wherever you get email, hopefully not on your phone. You get an email, maybe it's an agent contacting you for representation or picture book deal 
or anthropology approaches you for a mug collection, or you get a toy and game deal. So here's what I want you to write, fill in the sentence, and you can type it in the screen too, in the chat. Today, I, well, you don't have to write this part. Today, I got the most amazing email. Here's what you write. Blank contacted me about blank. So it can be, oh, Anna says, I, I got an email from Mud Puppy like that. That's fantastic. They're wonderful uh, kid toy and game place. She got a puzzle set out of it. Uh, so what would it be? Today I got the most amazing email. Netflix wants to make the Lilla show. How to make art that sells. That's Beth Captain. Beth is the biggest dreamer. Like I have big dreams, but she just is so visionary. And she and I teach MBA. We'll get to that in a minute, but I'm just going to say MBA, Money Badass, is our business class for creatives. And that's a great place to start. I love that, Beth. Let's make it happen. Well, Beth and I are going to travel around um, talking about our books that we're, I'm writing one and she's on her fifth. Um, Steffi says, Penguin Books contacted me to do a cover. Um, let's see. Today I got an email from a science magazine. They're asking me to do a cover, says Sylvia Fleur. A Moulin Routi contacted me to do a plush toy line, says Sinya. Oh, how great. Oh, look, there's some scrolling. Zoe Tucker contacted me to do a kid book with me, it says Pauline. Kara says Mattel contacted me about Jenna Boudal. Cherise Stryber, Cherise, I love your book, commissioned me to do, she was commissioned to do a tarot, tarot deck. Jen says Chronicle Books contacted me to publish my illustrated children's book. Annette Krauss, The New Yorker, asked for cover. Okay, good. Dream big. Dream big. So that's my spiel. Reminder, sale ends tomorrow. Your, these courses will help you get to your dream. Next question. Oh, sorry. So now answer this. To get this work or gig or whatever, I want to get better at blank. I need to get better at but I don't, I changed the need to want. I want to get better at. So what do you want to get better at to get that gig? Organizing my time, says Sally. That's the MBA class. Ken, Karen, pitching. Trish says, Macmillan asked me to create a magical pop-up book. Wow. Um, Beth says, to get the Netflix deal, I want to get better at pitching TV bigwigs. <laughs> Beth, I'm trying to I'm trying to do a live here and you're blowing my mind, girl. <laughs> I love her. Okay, time management, pitching, sending work, writing, organize characters, characters. Um, characters is great for Tamisha's class and uh, obviously illustrating children's books. Good. Oh, look at all these. How great. Okay, let's dive in. To our first guest is Beth, Beth Kempton. Beth, if you want to pop yourself up on the screen, and I'm going to introduce my wonderful co founder. You are just one madcap crazy girl. Hi, everyone. Oh. And did you see Margot just said, I've got a great TV contact? I'll introduce you. This is the power of the Makeup That Sells community. I didn't see that. I'll stop talking about this now, Lilla, because you need to concentrate. I know, it. right? I am trying to be professional. See, I'm dressing professionally today. But it's okay. so interesting, isn't it? When you have, you know, you have an idea, it seems like so far away from what's possible. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it just takes one person to say, I'll introduce you, or it takes you to just figure out the one thing you need to learn, and then it becomes suddenly possible. It's so important to do the dreaming, isn't it? And I had an artist that I took on her work was so amazing and she didn't she wasn't getting work I'm like how is this possible her and and then we talked and she did some psychological work and boom she's booked solid so it's such a big part of it dreaming and the doing and in the universe absolutely yeah okay Beth Kempton co-founder and producer of make art that sells 
Beth is an award-winning entrepreneur and best-selling self-help author who has dedicated her business and career to helping people achieve their full potential. Before starting her own company almost a decade ago, Beth worked with UN agencies, global brands, and NGOs all over the world, advising on corporate social responsibility, investigating projects that have instigating projects, sorry, that have raised over $10 million for charity. She also has a master's degree in Japanese <laughs> and is a Japanologist by training. She teaches Money Badass MBA, Matt's MBA, and you're on your fifth book or sixth? I just handed in my fifth book and I'm working on my sixth book. Fifth one's out in October, so it's about one a year. First one came out five years ago last month, so Oh, and there's, well, there's two other people in the um, oh in the comments who are Steffi and the Japanese master's degree and other Japanologists. Hi, folks. And and Beth in, in a past life um, was my my guided me, led me around in maybe Ireland in the Middle Ages, and I think I was a performer of some kind. And she booked all my gigs, and she's we were musicians. Of... We were musicians. This is from our past life reading that we had together. This is, how, this is how we decide how long we continue working together, you see. Before we re-sign the contract, we go to a tarot reader or, or a past life regression person, not a lawyer. Um, and we went to one who told us that we'd been together in many past lives, one of which we were both musicians in Ireland. We were men. Another, do you remember, I was a shaman and you were my assistant. I like that one. <laughs> well, I thought I came up with this because I have the picture in my head. No, no, that was when we were in Rockport. We went together and the lady said to us, we had a reading. Oh, maybe I elaborated on it. I always thought that I came up with it. Isn't that crazy? Well, it actually <laughs> happened, probably. So that's probably why. Yeah, so I remember it. But, <laughs> and here's the thing, like, you know, see, she's like, she's always coming up with great things. What are your tips for us today, Beth? What do you want to, what, what can you impart upon people? I think there's a couple of things right now that I really want to talk about. One is about possibility. Um, I, it feels like such a ripe time for making things happen at the moment. I think part of that is because it's spring and everything's blooming. I think personally, I've been, you know, for three months writing a book, hardly going out of the writing cave, hardly seeing anyone. And then last week I was co-hosting a retreat and it was just, we were saying just before we started, it was amazing to spend time with a group, a small group, about 20 creative women, um, just supporting each other to grow our businesses and we had some really fantastic conversations and that there everyone came away with so many ideas for their business but the most important thing was that you could see a complete personal transformation in how the people um, who attended saw themselves and saw what was possible for themselves and I think it's very easy when you have your own business especially if you don't have a lot of support around you um, to get bogged down in the detail and for things to feel hard and it's so important to get ourselves inspired again, reinvigorated, um, and just remember that we can do anything that we want to, but also to remember that we can't do everything. Um, and that's why I love MBA so much, because it helps people to prioritize with a, a, an understanding of what's generating money and what isn't, and reminding people that it has to make money for it to be a business, Otherwise, it's a charity or a hobby. And so making, I think the, the biggest thing for me with, with MBA, which stands for Money Badass, in my best American accent, um, <laughs> um, is, is that it really, I think people find a way to fall in love with their business, including the business side of their business, which a lot of people are afraid of. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we help you burst through your money blocks and see how your business can serve you and your family and serve your work in the world. Um, and also to really recognize all the good that you've already created um, to kind of be the foundation for everything that's going to come. So the first thing I wanted to say really is just remember that anything is possible, but also not everything is possible. And so it's important to prioritize. Um, and secondly, to, to stay connected to people who get it to you know, surround yourself with creatives who want to support you. Um, it's very easy if you, um, if you live with people or your immediate group of friends 
um, aren't people who express their creativity on a daily basis it's very easy to get sucked into their narrative um, people who get intimidated by you being creative or wanting to achieve your dreams especially if something actually goes well for you um, that can be really painful for other people both because it reminds them of what they haven't done um, but also because they can see that doors are going to open for you and what does that mean for them and so I think from a compassionate point of view there's important conversations to be had and um, but also you can proactively surround yourself with people who are doing the same kinds of things as you um, and championing you supporting you as you um, do these things and not everything will go right so people who will support you when it doesn't go right and keep you know keep you keeping on um, and that's the kind of thing you find in the makeup that sells community and in all the classes um, but also, you know, wherever you find those people in your crochet class, um, at your local cafe, whatever it is, it's just a reminder that um, building that sense of community where you can talk about these things that you love mm -hmm. is, is really important too. And can we say you get a 130 page downloadable playbook workbook? <laughs> you, you do. Yeah. Yes, that we work yeah. on bit by bit. Yes. It's super fun. And I think what, you know, we, we just started talking there about how when we're deciding whether to extend our partnership, we go to a spiritual person to tell us about our relationship. I think that says an awful lot about probably both of us and our approach to business. We're super strategic. We, I think after all of our experience together, we're pretty savvy. Um, we tend to be very early adopters of things, um, but we're also very much aware of the universe and how things are co-created and you know we tune into that we're very intuitive as well as being strategic um, and I think I hope that that we encourage everyone to to do both to be both um, to have both those hats on and money badass I think is really the first certainly the first course or the only course I know that really allows you to do that it's, it's super fun and also serious in terms of what it helps mm -hmm. you do um, and it's very practical, but also quite woo in some places. Um, but if I've learned anything in the last few years, it's we all need a little bit more woo, whatever you think about that word, you know what I mean? Um, because it really, it, it's how you tune into who you are different to everybody else. And um, how, you know, we've talked before about how what makes you weird makes you special. That's what you can't get in house, like you were saying earlier, Lilla. Right. Um, so, so we really encourage you to mm -hmm. do oracle reading in the morning, or light your candle before you get your paintbrushes out, or whatever it is, as well as thinking through the profitability of what you're going to do and how you choose between things and how you juggle your time if you've got children or other um, things you have to deal with. So, um, I hope that anyone who does take it will find it just really helpful and inspiring and practical and a way through those difficult money conversations we often have, mm -hmm. um, as well as showing you that you really do have a viable business that can flourish with a bit of effort and love from you. Wow, so true, so true. And if I can do it, you can do it, believe me, because I wasn't exactly what you'd expect to succeed back in, you know, 40 years ago. Well, it's hard um, to believe. And I have to say, Lila, I think it's really important that, um, you know, there's there's so many courses out there for of people teaching business related to creativity. But there are very few people who have been through four decades of mm -hmm. boom and bust and mm -hmm. everything, you know, so everything that the global economy could throw at an illustrator or an agent, you've been through it and you've Absolutely. seen you know, you've gone from hand-drawn illustrations, walk down the street to the magazine through to where we are now with technology. And, you know, I'm always amazed at how keen you are to, to try new things. And I think that depth of experience is something it's very difficult to find. And you're so generous with what you share. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, if you just keep getting excited about things and keep getting, I tell my kids, just get really good at things and people will pay for that. Just get really good about whatever you're passionate about. And, um, you know, yeah, I've supported myself for 40 years. I never stopped working. I never stopped bringing in money, always independently uh, uh, as of you know, an, a creative. I haven't had a job. I did teach right out of college. I taught for three years in middle school. 
So I don't know if that counts as a real job, but that was the last real job I've had. I'm not corporate material. I don't feel like I'm hireable at this point. I will consult. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna play- I just play wanna read a couple of these comments quickly, Lilla, cause it's brilliant to see um, everyone's, you know, needing some more woo, definitely. Um, MBA reminded me of so many things I'd forgotten, said, sorry, you're, um, Pauline, I think said that, yeah. Uh, Nemi Takahashi said, MBA is excellent, got me hooked on all the other maths classes. Sorry about that. Um, and I think uh, there was a really great comment I saw. Someone said it's a game changer, um, but what they needed to hear from MBA, oh, it's Nicole, um, was that we can do our part and we must do our part, but the thing we don't have control over is divine timing. And it's absolutely true. We don't, we can make plans and that's really important because it gives us direction, um, but we're not in control of the timeline. And when you fully take that on board, it's actually a real relief. Um, and you can stop trying to control everything and relax, which is how we make our best work, right? And sometimes you find you're working really, this, this just gave me a memory of when I really wanted something. I want this, I want this. And then I kind of look over, say, oh, well, there's that, mm -hmm. you know? And then that's the direction and it's staying open, staying open. Okay, um, should we do uh, the giveaway of MBA? Yes. Okay. Yes. So who, so if you have not done one of our giveaways, I'm going to say a category. You can type in as, what? Lilla, I know, I don't want to go off track, but seeing as we're talking about all this woo, can we have a really, really quick career to row for somebody? Because I know everybody wants one and I'll pull a card and you can do one thing. Just a really oh. quick one, go on. Career to row? Yes, who wants career to row? So raise your hand, go Are down you to raise your hand. Awesome. I'm always game. Okay, so I've got some I've got some cards for you here. I'm gonna pick one as well. And Lilla's gonna then this is a message for you. And then this is from Chris Ann's Sacred Creators Oracle. And then Lilla's gonna do you a to row. Okay, so raise your hand. Oh, we already have a ton of people. Okay. Let's do Anna Djorjevec. Anna Djorjevec. So Anna um, and Kim, if you want to make her make it okay, like get her up here, or does she just? Yeah, I will pop her up. Uh, okay. Give me one second. Oh, allowed to talk. Do you find her? Yeah, so I got her. What Career Tarot is, is these are cards from my first book. I've modified them over the years to make them a little more contemporary in some cases. Um, and so they're little. And then I just vibe it out. Hello, okay. Anna. Where do you live? Oh, unmute yourself. I think it's a cold okay, call. Yeah. Hi, I, I live in Serbia. It's close to Bulgaria and I don't know if you know, uh, Croatia and Greece. It's somewhere in the middle. Hi. Wonderful. Welcome, welcome. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's your magical time. For some Bye. reason, I was drawn to your name. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cards down. I'd like everybody to just breathe for a minute. Oh, two there. Okay, first card. You'll soon partner. You'll get an opportunity with a partner. Does that make sense to you at all? Uh, is There's someone who wants to do something with you or you dream of doing with someone? Yeah, there are a lot of uh, options for me at the moment. I'm actually um, open for a couple of jobs. Uh, now, so yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And what kind of jobs are they? Uh, I'm, uh, I applied for a visual artist uh, for a company who does fish book, fishing booking. 
So I, that's what I'm actually really excited to do. But I also do uh, freelancing as an illustrator. And um, I was the one who uh, got, um, uh, I was dreaming about getting, getting an email from Mud Puppy. And last year I got it. And I did a puzzle for them. So it's it's out like two weeks ago. So that's that's really something I'm looking forward to redoing again. But I don't know how to get another deal well, for it. Could be you partnering with them. It could be you partnering with that other company you said, yeah. but something you're going to be working with other people more now. Oh. Okay. It says teach an online class. Is that something you want to do? Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I've been an artist for 20 years now, so it's just a really long time for me. And I did a, um, at an academy here in Serbia, I did a class for illustrating children's book for, uh, for the students there. And they really loved it. I did a small class for them. And a couple of books for Quattro and, and uh, for other publishers, big publishers. Quattro? Quattro? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I I showed them my books and for yeah and they really loved it. So I um, I never thought I, I would be that good at teaching, <laughs> but it was really amazing uh, to to. You're doing great. Yeah. You're doing great. Okay, yeah. next, Instagram and um, your writing and art and photos. Uh, Pam Lott got that card last time too. Instagram, oh. your art and writing more and more and more. Yeah. That's, yeah, I need to do that. Yeah, definitely. You need to do that. Okay. <laughs> know that. Open an Etsy shop. Okay. Is that something you've been thinking about? Uh, no. No? No, but it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. What would you sell on there? Uh, I do also uh, surface uh, uh, design. Uh, so I would sell maybe fabrics. I I I, I did yeah. I, don't know, I love fat, fat surface design or maybe something more the art decor or home decor or something like that. I really love that as well. So yeah, maybe that I'll I'll write it down. <laughs> okay, and you let us know. And your last card is keep making your work better. What that means to me is you're still not even, even with all the great successes, you're still not even as great as you're going to be. I know. I know. I know, I know. you know. You're like 70%, 67 but you still are going to be even better. You're going to be really good. Thank you. Thank you. I feel it. And then Anna, what, do you, what do you feel most cool to work on now? Mm -hmm. Based on what Oh, I don't know. I love colorful. I make really colorful things, and I, I love the color, and I love I love making um, joyful and playful things for kids. I'm also mother of two small children, so it's re really I, I'm called for that. Most make books and puzzles like I did for Mud Puppy, so that was really fun to do. I did the oceans uh, for a science puzzle. It was science set of three science puzzles for Mud Puppy. Really? What, you, what math taken, classes have you taken? I'm, oh, I'm sorry, Beth. Uh, um, uh, uh, drawing faces, uh, bad, money badass, and that's. Oh. I so, didn't have. I, I don't have that much time to to take classes, and every time I'm thinking like I, I'm just not gonna be, hundred um, percent. Um, ready to to do the classes and which uh, one would you want to take it oh beth i'm sorry beth you go i was going to say anna um we're going to give you my kid book pitch for oh. free and because you didn't pay for it you don't have to put any pressure on yourself oh, at all yeah, okay. and you, the course is brilliant and it's self-paced so but there is a live with riley um later um towards the summer and oh. so you can just dip in and out as you need and we can't wait for, um, oh. for more to come maybe with mud puppy maybe with someone else and i pulled you this message for you which says magic happens when you most expect it so expect <laughs> i really magic. expected this today but uh, i was <laughs> it's really magical i can't believe it thank you Please. very much 
Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for coming on. And please send an email to hello at makeupthecells.com and Louise will get you sorted with the class. Oh, you're, you're awesome. Thank you. Ah, you're awesome. And you're, like you said, I love the way that you said, I know I am going to get even better. That's just yeah. brilliant. Yes. Never give us like Lila does. So I'm going to end up doing everything like Lila. <laughs> Oh, for the rest of my life oh. being joy to people <laughs> thank wonderful. you Leila. what a joy to talk to you thank oh, you so wonderful on. thank you for being with us anna beth i'd love to you know i told you this in an email i'd love to just do a course like this where we just career to row and give away classes what do you think everyone stuff. should we do that <laughs> we just, just yeah tell you good things and give away stuff that oh my good. god <laughs> so inspiring that's brilliant and it, I, it's not easy to come on a live zoom with lots of people and, no. and share like that that's awesome and yes you know, got some oh my god yes please <laughs> oh god. okay well we'll talk when i see you in uh, july in England. oh natalie says like the oprah's of illustration yes and you won the car and you won the class right, right. <laughs> you run mba and you will win mba and you win icb okay so well thank you beth um did you want to come back later or you, you yeah i'm going to pull oh, up I'll my come next back later. I'm, I'm still here but um talk to okay you. you've got so many good wonderful people talented people to come and talk to everyone so i thank will you. just be in the corner okay ne next we have i'm doing oh hang on a second we haven't done our mba giveaway we need to go thank you jenny we, we have to do our mba giveaway okay um, so here's the thing. I know I was wondering, I thought, well, maybe we did a giveaway. So that counts. No, um, Beth is all about abundance. I love it too. So um, I'm going to say a category you can guess as often as you want as many times. We have a lot of people here. So the guesses will come fast. Kim and I will look as quickly as we can to see who guessed it, but it's probably not who maybe guessed it first. You get what you get and don't get upset. Okay. Ready? Type ready if you're ready. I love people start guessing. And can I just say, if you win, if you win and you've already got it, you can give it to a friend. That's fine. Right, right. And you're going to win MBA, Money Badass with that. <laughs> Everyone's guessing Chartres and Orange. No, I love it. I love it. Okay. Question is a type of tea, because Beth, you know, British and stuff. Jesus. Oh, I think I saw it. I'm scrolling. Oh, here it is. Anna Bianchi, Darjeeling. Anna. Well done. well done. And I think Anna might be in my year, so she can gift it. Yeah. But just write to hello at Make Art That Sells and say that you won it and you can gift it. Congratulations, Anna. You'll make somebody very happy. Maybe somebody in class. In, in my year. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Beth. Moment. Thank you. Next, I'd like for Zoe Tucker to pop up. Zoe Tucker. Hello. Hello, love. Another British. Hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so good to see you, darling. Ah, it's good to see you too. I've really enjoyed this so far. It's great. So this all-star zoom is like my favorite thing in the world i have a confession i've never ever in my life had a tarot reading ever well we'll just fix that i, I just thought i threw the throw that into there I'm yeah so we'll fix that when i go <laughs> beth did <laughs> does she's come over to this side beth says you live in brighton that doesn't mean i've had tarot <laughs> anyway kind of have to let me introduce you. Zoe Tucker is a freelance art director with top publishers, by the way, designer and writer of children's books with over 20 years of experience. She's worked with quite literally, worked on quite literally hundreds of books from baby books right up to young adult. Her main passion is for picture books and narrative storytelling. She teaches my kid book pitch, illustrating children's books, illustrating children's books plus, and boot camp special character play. Welcome, welcome. Hi. We've been teaching since like 2015, I think. 
I'm guessing. Okay. I, don't know. I think it was. Um, I was forty. I don't know. It'll come back to me. <laughs> okay. Um. So, talk to me. Tell me what you love about your class or top tips why people should take it. Whatever you want. Oh, uh, do you know what, Lila? I think one of the best things about. I mean, we've talked a lot about community already. Mm -hmm. And I know there are a lot of familiar people on the chat. So I know a lot of you know what the community is like. But from a teacher's point of view, from our point of view, I have to say, particularly the last couple of years, the community that grows from our maths courses it just is so happy and positive. It's really heartwarming. Mm -hmm. I have found it hugely motivating in my own work. And I always mm. really enjoy seeing the gallery you know it's such a fantastic resource for me I've commissioned from the courses all the time I'm always looking um it's just yeah it's just such a happy place to be I know the students work insanely hard so there are obviously points in that where they're really stressed but from my perspective maths classes are just the best thing and so when you look at work in the gallery what are you looking for as an art director that commissions illustrators, which by the way, you have illustrate and you have commissioned artists from the class. Yeah. I have consulted with you on. So what do you think? We're thinking of taking the, this artist from class. What do you think? She's like, yeah, take that one. Yeah. We have behind the scenes. So what, why is the class so fabulous and important? Well, through the class, I should say, in illustrating for children's books, it's probably the sort of heaviest, biggest course we do about illustrating characters. And we spend three of the five weeks on character design. So we, you design your initial character, we talk about emotions, movement, energy. I go on and on about this brilliant thing called Spark, which is so important in children's books. The number one thing as an illustrator for children's books is that you have to have characters that move and animate across the page and that draw the reader in and get them to believe in the story. So we do an awful lot of work on that to bring your character to life. And then when I look at the gallery, it's almost like an instant thing when I see that spark playing out in the gallery. It catches my attention. Now, do you have, it sounds intimidating. Do you have to be oh. able to draw really well? Draw we go character. through all of the basics. You can start. You can start at the very beginning. And actually, with our texts, we have three texts that you can choose from in each class. And the texts vary in um, the characters are different for each one. And some of the characters are simple. So there's, there's always an entry point into this. But then there's also some that are more complex and that give those more experienced artists the opportunity to kind of flex those muscles, build their characters and their world. So a simple character might be a pencil that yes. you put eyes on. Yes, Everybody and I'm really excited about the, the character that we have lined up for one of our texts. Well, all of my characters I love. Everyone but, can But the draw. object one. So in the class as well. So I'm probably waffling and you guys are like, what is she saying? In the class, <laughs> there are three texts. There's one that's about, has like animal characters, one that has human characters, and one that has objects as characters. So like a pencil or a teapot. Mm -hmm. And the one that we've written for the class that's about to start, I am so excited about. Really, really excited. It's really okay. fun. It's really achievable. Zoe wrote the texts. She's been writing them since way back when I was, I, I don't remember how it happened, but all I know is Zoe, you're an art director. You can write like nobody's business. You've got to pitch these. Well, now, how many books have you written? Um, I think I'm on number seven. Number seven has just come out, I think. Yeah, that's been really fun. It's actually been a really good experience for me, Lola, because having spent like 25 years in the industry, you don't have a really clear sense of what it's like to be on the other side of the table to be the illustrator pitching your work and in my case being an author pitching your work and having that vulnerability and I think the experience of me putting my texts out there to be published has given me that insight a little bit more made me a bit better at my job I hope yes um, and not all of yes. them get accepted in case you're all wondering I have had rejections too so 
um, it kind of keeps you a bit grounded through it. I know, but you know, it's all about the right fit. I tell my kids this or something better. They're in their 20s. So whether it's a relationship or a job, this or something better, it's true. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, you've done amazing with your stories, uh, which well, is a little bit of a. Absolutely. Well, that's, I mean, I just see the good in you, the brilliance, easy. Okay. Um, any tips for people? What yeah, you look I mean, for in a portfolio? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, everything that we put into the classes mm -hmm. are definitely things that have come about from you and I talking about what we look for when we're trying to find artists for children's books. So whether mm -hmm. it's in Kid Book Pitch, Illustrating Children's Books or Illustrating Children's Books Plus, they're all kind of driven towards really good narratives with strong characters. So when I'm looking at a portfolio, Lilla, I do need to see lots of different characters doing different things, moving across the page. And then I want to see those characters in a really good world where you've a built world. this kind of, yeah, where you've built something quite unique and different I, that I haven't seen before. And mm -hmm. um, I would say top things that the industry is looking for is some real quirk and individuality. So something that we haven't seen before and also diversity in your characters. And that can be can, done in all sorts of ways. It's not just about skin color, it's about ability, it's about representing every different type of person that you can think of. Different body shapes, different gender body shapes. fluid in the clothing, yeah. as you said, different skin colors, different ethnicities, yeah. different headgear. It's yeah. so exciting. And what's happening in picture books, I believe, is one of the most progressive change agents in our in the world what these kids are being exposed to and what is progressiveness it's about opening minds being kind to others seeing maybe you were never exposed to this kind of person now you are in a picture book so you're going to be more humanitarian more caring more compassionate so it's political yeah. It's a really exciting time for us. And um, there is a question, actually, that in our Q&A, which I'm sure we'll come on to at the end, but it talks about, um, you know, what we think about heading into a period of um, economic uncertainty and weathering the storm. Mm -hmm. And I, I know there is, you were talking earlier about when you're, you're working on your own, you get those negative thoughts, what's the point? And if things are really difficult, it's easy to think, oh, you know, this is too hard. Why am I doing it? But actually in children's books in particular, but I think it probably carries on into children's toys, into clothing. People tend to buy for their kids all the way through. It, they'll give up something else in their life before they stop buying for their children. So historically, children's picture books have weathered economic uncertainty very well. And so I can tell you with all certainty that we are commissioning. We're um, currently commissioning 2024. And I do have one title in 2025. So we're always looking for new projects and new ideas. So you just got to keep making your art. It's really important. COVID has been phenomenal for picture books because people were at home. And Zoe's absolutely right. As an agent, I have seen at every recession. And I don't know that we're going to have one. We don't know. We don't know what positive things are going to happen too. Um, but I do know that children's books are always anything baby, baby apparel, baby books, baby toys, baby games. So think about Riley's class, too, for toys and games. These are the things that people spend money on. This is wonderful, who's, Zoe. Um, anyone who's been taking the character boot camp you'll know that there is this really lovely crossover between what Riley and I do. And in the development of making that class, we spent hours and hours just chatting the pair of us about what our industry did. And it's kind of like a, is it a Venn diagram where you have like me on one side, Riley on the other, and we kind of bit in the middle. It's quite yeah. a good chunk of us that overlap. And it's, um, they really complement each other nicely. Yeah, it could be really good for a lot of people to take both um, children's book and toy class because it is a, it's a similar vibe, a similar sensibility. You might develop a character 
for Zoe's class that you can turn into a toy in Riley's class. It happens a lot. So keep that in mind. And there are bundles which we can you can find uh, on the website of Make Art That Sells. Okay. Oh, oh, we have a giveaway. Okay. A giveaway of illustrating children's books. Again, one of our top most popular classes. Uh, the opportunities there are phenomenal. So the category is, uh, the category is a bird, go. Oh, it's way too fast. Starts with an E. No oh, well, I, think I, thought, I think I thought many okay, times. You pick. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. You pick. I really want it to be Egret, is it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Do you have one, Kim? I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> the first, the one I see here is Tracy. It's just Tracy, T R A C Y. Congratulations, Tracy. Uh -huh. write, nice. Write to hello at makeartthatsells.com and um, say that you won illustrating children's books at this all-star zoom we've got more giveaways more course giveaways uh, and then riley is going to do a uh improv inventing which you must stay tuned for because that is the coolest thing ever okay thank you so much zoe i can't wait to thank teach you. with you i've yes. learned a ton from this woman and i thought i knew stuff you're like up here to me am i over there to you <laughs> oh you're over there <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll see you soon. I'll see you at the thank end. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. And next, I would love to pop up to Misha Anthony. To Misha. Yay. Hi, hi. Hello, <laughs> darling. In New Orleans. Yes. I've only been here a month and a half, but I'm starting to adjust and meet people and get like used to the culture and everything. Oh, that's great. Um, and you love it. You told me when I come down, you're going to take me around to the tattoo, the tattoo. Well, maybe that too, the tarot to shop. <laughs> where, where are you going to take me? Yes, there's a tea room. Um, it's a man named Charlie that he can read your tea leaves or your tarot. He's the one who told me that I would reconnect to my childhood in a significant way right before I got into children's publishing. And he also predicted that I would move home shortly before moving to New Orleans. So he's amazing. I love him. <laughs> I really want to go. Yeah, well, you were living in New York for yes, some time. For and then years. out of the blue, you moved back home to Texas. I Which did in your first pandemic. choice. Yeah. yeah, I miss seeing family all the time. And my brother had two little kids and they didn't know me. So I decided to like go back home for a little while. And then we popped over to New Orleans after a year. So kind of close to family, but still in a big city. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. <laughs> so let me introduce you. Tamisha is an illustrator and educator. Uh, illustrator working for various clients on children's books such as Penguin Random House, Macmillan Publishers and Chronicle Books, three of the very best I might add. She <laughs> finds that educating little ones or the young at heart always inspires her art. She's been an educator for several years teaching at institutions such as the New York Historical Society and Harlem School of the Arts. She teaches redrawing black history where we had 4,000 students in that class, 4,000 and change. It's amazing. Who took that class? It's just absolutely spectacular and uh, really, really <laughs> wonderful. I want to just say about the class before you tell us uh, your top tips and so forth, is that we will be offering it again free and it's self-paced. It will be added to all of your purchases. And it's very, very important about not just diversity and it's not diversity for the sake of diversity. We talked so much, we were friends before I said, what are, why are we like together all the time on these? <laughs> like what, what brought us together? And I'm like, Tamisha, hold on. We're gonna teach a course together. 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I off, I don't do I do this like every few years. It's not like every minute I offer somebody to teach with me. And we talked about the importance of having a course that's joyful yes. about black culture, black history. You want to speak to that and tell about the four eras or whatever you were going to talk about today if I <laughs> no, I messed I you up. And looking into black culture and history in a joyful way, that's the way I celebrate it. I'm really into jazz and Lindy Hop and a lot of things that um, African Americans brought to America that it's just beautiful and, and bright and spirited, even though they were going through many things that they struggled with and times were dark. And that's what I wanted to highlight in this class. Like we know about a lot of struggles that African Americans my culture, my people go through, but do you know how they handle it with such beauty, with such creativity that they come up with magical things? I know you and I initially talked about um, during a time when um, Black people were enslaved and how they took clothing that was just passed down to them that was ragged and wasn't new and they would dye them and piece different clothing together and make something really creative and beautiful out of it. So they took rags and made something joyous and beautiful and new and creative. And that's what I love about the African-American spirit. That's what I love about creating this class with you. We share a lot of that. We pop, um, we start in the time period um, during Af when African Americans were enslaved, we got into the jazz era, which is my favorite because I love dance, I love jazz music. Me and my husband just went to an amazing jazz bar the night before last and heard musicians and like it's where like Louis Armstrong played before in New Orleans and has all this delicious history. We also talk about civil rights times in the 1940s and 50s, and then we end with Black is Beautiful of the 1960s and 70s. We dive into fashion and history and like inspire you with clothing and accessories and deep diving into how you can accessorize these different beautiful artists, Black artists that we talk about in each class. So it's an exciting class, it's an inspiring class, it's a class that you can learn on the surface and create beautiful artworks, or you can deep dive and continue to learn more. We had a lot of students that just kept digging and went to different museums to like discover art from these amazing women. And it's exciting. It's still ongoing. People still post things and it's inspiring. It's so. gotten a lot of attention, well-deserved. Yes. It's just, you know what it is? It's a banquet, a buffet, and it is about the positive Black American experience. Um, we're getting a little bit of a sound. I don't know what that is. Is it when you talk, is there, where's your microphone? Oh, it's in my computer. Can you hear me clearly? Um, it's just a little vibration. It's not bad. Okay. <laughs> yeah, move, we'll try moving a little closer, maybe. A little closer, shimmy a little closer. Yeah, Hi, shimmy. <laughs> Let's see if that's better. Maybe that's better. No, okay. no. A little oh, better. No, it's still there, a little muffle. Oh, it may be my oh. air conditioner. I have a window unit in my um, studio. Oh, it's maybe pick. That. That's fine. Okay. Every, oh, yeah, I think it's a fan. Doesn't it's everybody fan. says yes. doesn't bother them. Good. Okay. okay. So, um, you know, it's um, what it, it was truly extraordinary to see the work come out of there. You were so motivating in addition to dance, doing dance at the end of every <laughs> video, but also uh, you gave like further reading, further videos. Will you speak to that for a moment? Like what well, you so offer? It's pretty much just giving a dabble of the Black experience. I give examples of current shows to watch that dive into Black culture. I give examples of different audiobooks that I listen to while I draw that I find inspiring and kind of like historical fictions. Some of it is a little fictionalized, but you get to know about different people that were kind of overshadowed in the past who have brilliant lives that are really being spoken about today. And also, um, yeah, I want to talk about the even we have that new article for uppercase coming out where we do the spilling the tea with tea. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, yeah, so I'm like, how did that happen? I, I think I said, how would you like to do a column, right? Should I talk to yeah. Janine? And yes. 
and I'm like, Janine, let, how about Tamisha? And, and Tamisha did a, a piece, a column. And you, you want to say a little bit about that for Uppercase Magazine? They'll be coming out um, their next edition, and it's about Alma Thomas. So it's kind of like an extension of the class. I talk about this amazing abstract artist that like she was making abstract art when women really weren't, it's supposed to be a white man's artistic. Right. It's Rothko, it's Jasper yeah. Jones. Right, exactly. right. Exactly, yeah. and she was a black woman and, and people criticized her so much for being different and she just wanted to add color and beauty into the world. And I found that I connected to her so much that I wanted to write about her and do a little bit of the spilling the tea with tea like I do in class where I talk about four different artistic women, whether it is performing arts or visual arts or music. I, I love all the arts. I have participated in all the arts throughout my life and I find them all inspiring and amazing to see how black women push through their struggles to make beautiful, inspiring things. How, how's it going with your picture books? What are you on number five or six or what are you on now? Well, I, have, I got six book deals and I just had a, my first book birthday just a couple of days ago. Oh my God, that's gorgeous. My first open up to a, a page or two. Yes. Okay. Oh my God. It is and so you good. have grown in the short, I've known you what, a year or two? Yes. You just that's spectacular colors magical elements oh, to yeah. it too. yes how do you <laughs> like illustrating picture books oh i love it. it it really connects to how i think creatively i i love creating characters we talk about characters all the time and and just being able to um show the world different children that i didn't have as a child when reading children's books and making it feel okay to look the way you look and that's what I, I love about this the most and mm -hmm. yeah, it's been lovely it's <laughs> wonderful wonderful thank you so much we're going to do a giveaway um and what we're going to give away is um drawing faces my class drawing faces which is a wonderful supplement to Tamisha's class where you will be drawing faces as In well my very first Matt's class I took was that your first maths class? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Here is what I want you to guess. Guess. See your pretty blue dress. Guess something. Don't stand up. Don't let them. We'll reveal later. <laughs> something printed on her dress. Go. I don't see it yet. You guys are so close. I saw it. Did you see it, Kim? I didn't it went fast. Yeah, it's going too fast, but if you're <laughs> scrolling up. That's it. Oh, here it is. Seahorse. Da, 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 da. There it is, see? <laughs> and it's Valpuri Cartula. Valpuri Cartura, congratulations. You've won drawing faces. I'm sure that's you're gonna enjoy that. And it's children's faces and adult faces and how I learned to do it and invented my own system um, for uh, being an illustrator. So uh, just write to hello at make art that sells. Oh, she says, OMG, yes, thank you. That is perfect for me, wonderful. Yeah, her dress is great. Uh, <laughs> write to hello at make art that sells and tell her that you won drawing faces. So Louise at, over at make art that sells, she's gonna be busy giving out Horses like Santa Claus, <laughs> Sandra Claus. Okay, next. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. much. I can't wait to see you again. Okay, how's everybody doing? We have Margot, we have Riley, and Riley's going to do his invention uh, in private invention. But right now, we're going to pop up the wonderful cool trend expert Margot Tento who teaches creating collections for home decor. Hello Margot from Vashon Island. Oh unmute yourself or turn on your volume. Because 
Oh, well, there we are. Start over. I didn't hear you. Start over. Throwing those away. Um, hello, lovelies, is what I thought I was saying to everyone. I guess I need new, new, uh, new headphones. I'm so excited to be here. So excited. Yay. It's so wonderful to have you. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thanks for all the love. I just, it's like, not quite as fast as chartreuse, but. Thanks. Yeah, right, right. I know. Uh, I can never actually have chartreuse be an answer. <laughs> no, no. It's I have like, my lucky Beth and Lilla mug. Oh, always. My favorite, as you know. And you live on this little island off the coast of Washington. Washington. State. I saw some, there was some, there was a shoreline person here. I saw some other mm. Seattle people in the, in the house. Um, I and, and, uh, yeah, I do. I live on an island. You have, I have to take a ferry from the, from Seattle sure. or Tacoma to get to ooh, Tacoma right there to uh, get home, which is a wonderful thing. That's amazing. And Lilla, I didn't, I haven't told you this yet, but I have a 14 year old going into high school and he was just accepted into the Tacoma School of Arts. So we're going to have to figure out a commute, but I'm very excited for him. And uh, I'm sure just all of this had something to do with that. So wow. uh, a lot, a lot of love for the whole process. You know what I love too? The viewers are watching and hearing about prosperity, success, opportunity. It's really important to be around it and around people who are thriving because then you think, well, maybe it's possible. Okay, let well, me tell and, you. And we don't always thrive, right? We don't even always feel like we're thriving, but you, you've yeah. said it in many ways today. And I loved when Anna came on and you did that that whole thing because we're all thriving in some way, you know, and it's just picking it out and holding on to that, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Let me tell you about Margot, creative director. Margot is passionate about art, design, and people who create. She's experienced in design, manufacturing, wholesaling, retailing, product development, and licensing of home decor and so forth. She had her own manufacturing company and has been in the past creative director of Gift and Home, of, of Gift and Home Decor Company. Oh, of the mid, the sorry, of the Gift and Home Decor Company, Midwest CBK, and the fabulous creative co-op company and more. Margot's favorite pursuit is helping other artists and creatives grow by focusing on what they do best. She's the host of a top rated creative podcast called the Windowsill Chats. And she teaches creative, creating collections for home decor and home decor plus with me. And again, I thought I knew a lot, but I learned a ton <laughs> from those classes. Uh, it's such a, you know, if you want to make products, if you want to get into anthropology or West Elm or any cool place, and make your line of stuff. This is the course you've got to take. There's nothing like it. So what top tips do you have or what do you want to share today? There is nothing course? like it. I still am kind of blown away, Lilla, that we've been doing this. We wrote it in 2014, I think, put it out in 2015, the very first one, and there's still nothing like it. And I think part of that is the combined uh, experience and knowledge that we bring to this is, of course, you all have a different story than anybody else, and and uh, Lila and and my story is pretty symbiotic as to how we like to help other people and share what we've learned along the way. Um, yeah. My, I love how Lila says, you know, create what you love, people buy your joy, a hundred percent yes. And my tag onto that, or the thing that you've many of you have heard me say is people buy what they see. They buy what they see. So if you're not doing those things, or if you're not showing them, right. how are they going to know? So the more you learn, if you really want to have that gift line, home decor line, card line, pu puzzle, kids, toys, book, you've got to learn it and show it, right? Mm -hmm. So the more you take and the more you immerse yourself while well, all that all the while kind of putting on that cape of like i'm learning this but how do i want to do it my way right you get seen that's what you're known you start to be known for and it just is so exciting and i love it so much and you can tell like i like <gasps> i get 
very excited yeah, about. And, and I just want to tell everybody too, in the beginning you show things and nothing happens often. True. Nothing really happens, but that doesn't mean no one's looking. I may yeah, be in the lottery if you don't play. Yeah, and over time you're building momentum. Please don't get discouraged if nothing happens right away. I know in the beginning when you put something out there on social media or pitch to somebody and you don't hear back, you just are devastated. Don't be devastated. It's you're moving forward. Even if nothing feels like it's happening, you don't know who just brought your work to a meeting. What art director? It's so true. It's so true. There's so many of you probably right here right now that I'm thinking about for projects but I you know it's just like Zoe said too you you just see things mm -hmm. and 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 they they stick in there and it's I I help people with this a lot like how do I even approach someone how do I find the right person to approach all that with Matt in in um Creating what is it money the badass one right you talk about all that too because mm -hmm. it's all part of the process and it does take a minute but if you're doing something that excites you and it's something you love then it's all part of the learning sometimes right. a no is the best kind of learning also right so because because you're you're like they might say you know here's what we're really looking for or and and that gives that's an opportunity to to try again or or learn try something a different way. So yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. It's all good if your attitude is open. Yeah. Stay open. It's an opportunity to learn. I once said to myself many years ago when I was so stubborn, I realized, stay open, Lilla. And it's well, true. What, what do you Margo, what do you say you say to your kids? If not, the next one will be better. Yeah, I wrote it down. Oh or, yeah. Um, this or something better. This or something better. Yeah, this or something absolutely. Better. It yeah, completely you know. relates. I love that. Okay. Yes. I love that. Um, and, and I super but, love that we're going, we're teaching it live. I love that we're teaching it live again. I'm so, so excited. Thank it's you. been too long. It's such a beautiful class. Will you talk about the five substrates? One per week that we dive deep into. Yes, we do. So um, some of you, who if you haven't thought about or taken home decor or you know really given too much time to think about it you're like huh what's home decor about so oh, what is it? when you go into a store and you look around there are a lot of things you start i i challenge you now start seeing what art is on what pattern is on are the substrates we focus on because they're the most widely used for home decor are ceramic like that Look at the pattern on there. We talk all about how this got here. Glass, metal, fabric, and glass, metal, fabric, ceramic. What am I forgetting? Oh, here's metal. Yeah. The tin, <laughs> wood. Thank you. <laughs> Jeez. I know. I always forget to. I'm like, wait, what's that? But there's so, and the cool thing I've been, I've been reading over all the notes and things just to just to kind of immerse myself in it again. For instance, the week we spend on metal, like you might think metal, okay, it's a flat surface. What do we do with that? No, you can cut it out. You can perforate it. You can like make it convex or concave. You can cut shapes out of it. You can add shapes. You, there's so much you can print on it. You can, we go metal into tins. all of that, all of it, different types of metal. And for every single substrate, it's how you create work that can then be put on those types of products or seen even better remember people buy what they see seen by those companies that are looking for the kind of work you're doing and it's just like everything else it's like fashion every six months in the industry new designs come out every six months so mm -hmm. it's and often more often at the least at the very least so and there's things that you know, I have a I have a new line um, that I'm working on with one of the companies I work with, and it's vinyl, vinyl floor mats, and that's super fun for an artist because they're flat, you guys, oh, and they are wow. all the way from two by three up to a five by seven. Wow. That is just a beautiful watercolor art, you know. And it's I mean, there's so many, and guess what? I get to make all the decisions about this. It's so fun. Um, 
but even even to a very playful oh i had the page turned down but i must have gone away um i don't know a very playful like you know there's illustration in there for sure yeah, it's gorgeous pattern and they yeah. these there's things like there's so many things that your artwork can be on packaging you know we we go into all of how to prepare your files but mainly how to think 3d when lil and i very first started thinking about this i remember sitting in your living room you were hooking a rug and you have all those gorgeous vases on your mantle and we were talking about the fact that when you look at a portfolio everything's flat basically it's a you it's in a book form or it's on your screen and so how do you start to show that you are thinking dimensionally because then you're helping that art director creative director get to their end goal um and if they see you're thinking that way you're making their job easier you're making it a, just a you're it's a much easier uh thought that they could work with you to make those things happen it's it also so shows that you have the savvy about the business you're not just saying you know here's a pretty picture you're yeah. showing that you're thinking about it you're motivated and excited and i've taken on artists because of their work that they've done in this class because it's translatable to many many markets many products and home decor also stationery apparel kid apparel yeah what yeah. else well, if you think about it fabrics, books. wood metal textiles ceramics mm -hmm. there's a lot that that covers because all of those can translate to paper as well so and wall art and wall art wall paper yardage it. yeah yardage is fabric the big big world out there yeah. you know what you know canvas covered wall art there's it's mm -hmm. when you start to think about it you might have you might have been thinking like oh home decor is you know wall art well there's a lot more to it mm -hmm. um and it's it's very exciting and wait till you see the storyboards i've been working with um a lovely former uh home deck student Anna Bianchi she and I have been brainstorming the most amazing way I you Lilla always gets first pass she gets to um see and so then we all work on it together that way she and I but oh my gosh I can't it, wait you're, to see you're I think you're really? gonna be so excited I kind of don't really? want to give it away. Yes, there's four. And you want to give it away. I can tell. I want to give it away. And I want you to tell I'm me. I'm just going to say. You know, say, after this, I'm going to be Margot. Tell me what it is. There, I'm just going to say there's some, I'm going to give an obscure hint, but there's okay. one that is about a current yet way in the past show that's very popular. That's all I'm going to say. And if anybody watched the Met Gala and the fashion process there that might have something to do with it as well that's all i'm gonna say well what we love about margot is her trending and her taste level and it's like cool and gorgeous but marketable and inspiring and um she also does very often she does trend boards for boot camp yeah which is great i i love doing it i the fun thing is lila will give me a topic and then i just and that's how i think about this class too it's yeah. all a subject matter to me you know right. and and that's what lil and i hope from when you get the boards mm -hmm. and when you start because each week is separated into a couple of different ways to go about thinking about the whole process like so it doesn't it. seem overwhelming because and this is another thing i don't see very often in people's portfolios the elements the elements to any it's kind of like when you do toys right or the children's book you start with a character so lila has had this great way of kind of breaking down how to start with each week with certain elements of what that style board is talking about and right. so that's infused in and again you can have picked up a pen for the first time but you're passionate about learning about it mm -hmm. and get great knowledge and have a ball in this course it's so true it's so true and with the 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 trend board it's a color story so you get a color story which you can riff off of 
Mm -hmm. but it gives you that structure, the subject matter stuff to draw from the board. So it's not just, this is pretty, this is pretty, but actual imagery, you get a ton of handouts. We poured everything into that. We did. Okay, so. The world. So that is so, so cool, Margo. I'm so excited. Okay, so we have a giveaway. We have a giveaway. Um, and the category is get ready and you're going to win creating collections for home decor. The give the category is type of furniture. Go type of furniture. Ottoman. Okay. Nerissa Eckerson. Ottoman. Yeah. I love yeah. a good Ottoman. That yep. combines, it could combine fabric, wood, and metal. And yeah, embroidery. All, we we yeah. go into all the good juicy things you guys and it really translates mm -hmm. all the way around and I think one of the my favorite thing is it adds pieces to your portfolio that really make a difference with how your your work is seen yeah you'll be pitching you're you're making a pitch every week and we help you you'll okay. do it okay thank you so much Margot Tanto can't wait to see you all in August yay yay Yay. And remember all of your, uh, everything is in the, the catalog, the guide, which you get on the Make Art That Sells homepage, uh, the link to it. And you will, um, everything is in there. It tells you when the courses start, how much, what, who's teaching, everything you could possibly want. Thank you, Margo. That was great. And now, last but totally not least, my friend and crazy man in whatever, Riley Wilkinson. I told you it's my turn. It, it's always my turn. I'm first. Oh, just sorry, playing, you know, playing a quick game of dominoes with nobody in the room. <laughs> Aren't these great? These were a sample we bought for one of the concepts we were working on with one of our artists. Oh my God. And they float. They float, they look good as like a bow tie. Okay, this is a fashion well, class, so do go on, sorry. Okay, so Riley teaches my toy pitch, and that is a course where you're going to make toys. It's self-paced this time, it's in July. Well, it's any time actually, right away. Um, and you can just dive in right away. So let's see, let me tell you about Riley agent and inventor, toys, games, and children's entertainment. Riley is a child pretending to be a grown-up. Riley created the smash hit game for preschoolers, the sneaky, snacky squirrel game. How many of you know that game? Many of you do. It's sold worldwide. This award-winning game has sold over 2 million copies, 2 million units. His in-house experience includes Mattel, Creations, American Girl, MGA Entertainment, and more. He teaches my toy pitch and boot camp special character play. So welcome, welcome. I love teaching oh, wow. with you, Riley. Oh, you just... ditto, ditto, ditto. Hi, Lilla. So... Hi, everyone. Hi, teachers. Hi, Beth. Yes. Um, so, Riley, do you have tips for what, what, what you like to see in a oh and riley is also an eight it doesn't even say that on here we got to get that on there he's an agent at my agency he's the toy and game agent at lilla rogers studio well and to add on to that i am currently pitching a few concepts from the class we just wrapped up to a few companies yes, not sir. i'm not spilling the beans but okay. yes yes he's actually taking artists that we don't even represent from the class and making uh making um what's pitches it pitching concepts pitching concepts introductions yes fantastic so uh, a lot of goodness a lot of goodness so wh what do you need to see in a pitch riley what do you like to see when you're looking oh. through that that gallery of work from the class and you see all this great stuff um i something that stops me. And here's what stops me. Um, either an idea that I've not seen before, mm -hmm. a style I haven't seen before, something that's really kid friendly and that is not common, something I'm just surprised by. 
Um, maybe a toy or game that's a fresh take on a tried and true classic. Um, character, definitely in unique, interesting characters. Um, I will say that in the course, I think each student, you all find your own superpower. And when I'm looking at toy and game pitches, I'm looking at them from a number of different angles, not necessarily this is the only one that is the best game ever, or this is the one that's the best character I've ever seen, or this is only about style. It's all of those. And I think that's what we've seen in the class is Would that, you, yeah. that some students really gravitate towards, I don't know, upside down planet Mars earthworms, or I know you love that when I do that. I You're going to make me turn that into a game. Yeah. Um, some students are just, up, not just, are all about characters that could become toddler toys or infant toys. Mm -hmm. Some are completely into games. You know, we've yeah. got uh, four categories plus matchup. And Can you tell I, the categories? Okay, they are pretend play, games, characters, play sets, and then mashup. And it's the mashup where I really see where you all gravitate that's that's basically independent it's like you're independent of, what do they call that in college you know you get to just do whatever you want for the fifth week and we're there to support and then review it taking what you've learned and you probably had um, lots of other ideas during the course that you then want to develop independent study thank you Annette. independent study yes yes so um yeah, it, and, and here's the thing. A lot of people think, oh, well, I can't invent a toy. We're not talking about some electronic contraption. Right. We're talking about like, I just want to, do I still have this here? Oh, yeah. Like some gorgeous art-driven, this is one of my favorites. Like you draw this mouse, you draw the box, the clothes, you just draw it on a flat piece of paper. This is a toy. Mm -hmm. It's so art driven and they're looking for beauty and style. Okay, capiche? That's my high school teacher used yeah, to say. Yeah, what you just held up, the fact that that's in a little suitcase, like that's so cute. It's so like a child would love carrying that around, but it's completely. Mm -hmm art driven what you just held up 100 percent. it's so cram full the course is so cram full crammed full british jenny's here i better use my tenses yeah. correctly our writer um do you like that british jenny yeah so do you have um advice um i would say get to know the market sort okay. of do some window shopping, go on Amazon. When you're out buying groceries, stop by the toy aisle and see and listen to what is most interesting to you, meaning a category. And in the class, we talk about categories. And there like. are so many categories, like plush is a category, games for adults, that's a category, strategy games, action figures. Like, where do you gravitate? So. I think that's something you should do and write all of your ideas down. Uh, I think some of us, we have no lack of ideas. Like it's just a well sometimes, but write them down. Yes. As you never know. I mean, I do it all the time. I was flipping through a notebook on, you know, Lily, you always talk about finding the chair, the yes. chair and the sort of routine I was sitting in that chair. Uh, going through an old sketchbook and I thought, wait a second, I've already done, like I was obsessing about this a year ago. So, you know, I wrote it down and clearly I've started doing some work in my head about this concept. So the two tips, get to know the marketplace, find mm -hmm. what inspires you um, yeah. and start writing to, in sketchbook, yeah. pieces of paper, just write those down and look at them and see what inspires you because it's all about inspiration well if and you get a... better yeah. yes you get, yeah you get better and better the more you ideate the more you create ideas uh, riley do you want to give a few websites like may maison what is it maisonette like sure. what are a few uh, sites people could look at 
for some of the cooler art driven toys. So one of my favorites is Mulan Roti. There, in fact, I saw one of the students say that they yeah. were just awesome. contacted by Mulan Roti. That's a dream. M-O-U-L-I-N. Roti, R-O-T-Y. Um, Manhattan Toys, it's a US company. I love what they're doing now. Um, you know, we do a lot of work with Dejeco, DJ, ECO. Um, and even Tender mass market toys. companies, well, you know, if you're in Target, you're going to see in the game section some games that maybe are a little out of the ordinary. Really? Um, okay. Yeah, especially in that back wall. And I know Target is not in every country, but the smaller toy stores, if you have a smaller toy store in your neighborhood or town, go there because you're yeah. going to see companies that you're not going to typically see in a larger um, you know, products that you're not going to mm -hmm. see in a larger store. That's what I always like to do. Go into a smaller toy store. Cara says in the Target unique section. That's good. Also, Tender Toys is good for you to look at. And we know that most of you are not toy people, toy development people, toy and game. But I want to disabuse you of that idea that you can't do it. Um, and we give you everything you know, it's crammed full, so you will get everything you need to make these wonderful pitches. Um, mm -hmm. Even a puzzle is a toy. Yes. Or game. All, all day and night, artists are commissioned for puzzles, stacking mm -hmm. toys, um, plush. Plush even, stuffed animals. Yeah, yeah, even when you get into the like the activities category yeah. and in the- Bingo. Checkers, character boot chess. camp that was the last latest assignment in character boot camp it was stickers and a coloring sheet it was like a sheet that you yeah. put stickers on they're always right. being produced and absolutely and the facebook group i could just go on and on and on i well, love but, this but, but facebook you know what group I, in class you know what i want to do i want to do um the improv inventing we just have a few minutes okay and um maybe i'll do another career tro at the end if there's time and we'll ask oh we're going to pop somebody up on the screen after riley and all of the vips will be on the screen we'll look at your website or your insta and we will all chime in so you get um oh hear me and you'll get uh i'm not breathing enough I'm talking too much um, that, um, water. Oh yeah. Thank you. Is that from water? Mm. Or this, this works too. Zero calories. Okay, Riley, I'm going to show you five things and pick however many you want or not want. And like improv inventing, we call it. And the cool part about my toy pitch, the course called my toy pitch is you get a video we recorded so many and i think it's every thursday you get riley doing this improv inventing and the purpose of it is it's going to teach you how to think like an inventor how to come up and it's nuts and cool okay so let's see we've got here we go here we go so a dollar bill and it, and all of you in the chat can come up with ideas dollar bill dollar bill magnifying glass okay <laughs> okay it's vintage with a glass handle of course it is. you own it so it's vintage one of these things what's that called birthday party, party favor okay it's with a pattern okay um a dalmatian <laughs> okay of course and a shark Okay. I have drawers full of these things, by the way, in case you're wondering. Okay. I would like to keep the Dalmatian. Okay. The party uh, whistle thing. Okay. And <laughs> the dollar, the dollar bill. The dollar. Okay. Okay. Here's what he's going to riff off of. So... I picked the Dalmatian because toys and games, animals, they're always big. They're like, animals are important. Okay, so Dalmatian, Dalmatian. spots, dollar bill, party. 
All right, so what if this is a game? Okay. And it's a bunch of Dalmatians that, um, okay, so you're not counting spots because okay. I feel like I've seen that. What if you are, okay, and then there's the party whistle. Okay, everyone's trying to get to a party. I like to think of a narrative, like there's an end result. You're trying to, the Dalmatians are trying to get to a birthday party. Okay. And I'll reenact. In order, to, so at the beginning of the game, the Dalmatians, maybe they have um, the regular black spots, and you are trying to change your black spots into like rainbow spots, like confetti, so that you've changed your clothes by the time you get to the party. So it's a bunch of Dalmatians. There's like a pile of spots, different uh -huh. colors. You're taking turns and maybe the gift is dollars. You're bringing money. You're bringing money to a birthday party. You're a Dalmatian that's got to arrive at the birthday party in a bunch of different colored spots. How do you get uh, the spots? You, so there's maybe a spinner. Okay. There's a spinner and maybe the spinner has the different colors. Maybe it has miss a turn. Maybe it has go to the fire hydrant and pee, something funny. <laughs> Um, Depending on it, what age. Yeah. Um, I think this is uh, four to six, this game. Okay. And you, maybe the, the party thing, the thing you're holding in your hand. So you're getting to the party, but maybe it's also a component in the game, like a piece. Mm -hmm. And maybe for every time someone adds like the blue spot, everyone in the game like blows the party thing. So ah. it's a board game, you're regular Dalmatians, and you're trying to get dressed to go to the party. You have to be the first one ah. in multicolored spots. I love it. And maybe they like stick on and Velcro or magnet or, yeah. or like a like color form, like a vinyl. Oh, right. Yeah. So it's not permanent. You put them on yeah. there. So you can play it each time. And um, is there some gizmo or gadget? I or think some that twist? party thing that you're holding, that kazoo, that whistle thing, mm -hmm. I think that's the twist. That's in the game. And every time, I don't know, every time a specific turn happens, every time a dog lands on a specific spot, maybe someone blows it. Or if you get to the party first, you get to blow that thing. And right. With removable this for every time you play the game. So it's yeah. sanitary. So kids so, are giving each other COVID. That's that's what I think I would do. I love it. Is there like a buzzer, or, you know, some sound thing? There could be. There could be a buzzer that barks. So maybe instead of the kazoo, because of what you just said about communal, you know, putting your right. mouth on it. Maybe it's a, you like how I'm clapping. Maybe it's a buzzer that has a bark or a growl or a whimper mm -hmm. that's randomized based on what you land on. Yeah. And it, they all mean something. Like if you get the bark, it means go back. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And if I you like get that. a, uh, if you get, um, or a growl is go back, a bark is go forward. Maybe if it barks, harf, 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 you go three Arr. spaces. Yeah. And the oh. other thing I like about the colored spot. Spotopoly. Sorry, oh. Mars is Spotopoly. <laughs> um, this is the fun you're going to have in class, and you're going to, like, make pitches out of it. This could be a game. I, I think this could be a game. I really like Do the multicolored it. spots because it feels very inclusive. It's yes, not just rainbow. a white dog with black spots. It's rainbow. It's all dogs, mm -hmm. all, all paws, all, genders. all tails, all barks. Yes, all barks are welcome here. Yes. <gasps> all barks are welcome here. The barking, like, barky party. kind of riff off that, seriously. All barks are welcome here and the rainbow spots. And it, I love it. it uh, see, that's how we roll. <laughs> Oh, All the right. pressure. This is, I forget how much fun it is to improv I with know, you, I know. Lola well, Rogers. You're so fun. Thank you, Rye Bread. I call him Rye Bread. Thank That's you. another thing. We come up with nicknames as part of the course. It's a requirement. <laughs> Not really. 
Okay, thank you, Rai. Thank we'll see you. you in a sec for hey, everyone. Yeah, so now, thank you everybody for staying with us so long, but we got good stuff. If all the VIPs can come back on the screen and, oh, that's right, MTP giveaway. Oh, we got to do a giveaway. MTP, I like that. My toy pitch giveaway. Okay, everybody and, and the VIPs, you can stay on. Yes, thank you. The giveaway is, here's the question. <laughs> what color is Riley's shoe? What color is Riley's shoe? Oh, I saw it. Okay. Kim, did you see it? Yes, it I saw it. I saw Carl. Valerie Meyer. Oh, oh, I'm behind. And do I show it? Do I show my shoe? Yes, show your shoe. We take it off. You gotta untie it. Yeah. Okay, there's my there's my shoe. <laughs> and that gives you a flavor for the level of maturity that you can come to expect in oh. a class of that caliber. And he's a hot shot inventor. So it's about play. And we we like to get you loosened up and have fun. <laughs> Verma says, I can't handle this. <laughs> it's a show. I know. For my Netflix show, Beth. We can just like have all our guests and yeah. All right. Yes, there's like one one item in the series in each of the windows in this Zoom, I think. We can have everybody oh. on it. Oh, I like okay, it. and I, I forgot my class. So here's what I want to tell you. I have hot news, hot news. My agency is growing. Um, and what it is, is that we are getting more, becoming more of a literary agency because we're licensing so many of our authored illustrated books, authored books, authored um, art books. Oh, did we say who won? Who said the pink? Did we say who won, Kim? Yeah, it was Valerie Meyer. Okay, so Valerie, send an email to hello at Make Art That Sells and say that you won Riley's course. Yay, Valerie. So the big news is we're becoming more of a literary agency, which I'm very excited about. As many of you know, I'm writing my second book and I'm completely obsessed with writing. I have been teaching my kid book pitch. That's the name of the writing class, which I love. Um, it will teach creatives, artists in particular, but not exclusively, how to craft a book and it's easier than you think. And I'm going to get crap for about what, I, what I'm about to say, but I think it's easier to learn how to write a picture book than it is to draw a picture book for creatives, for artists, because you already, making art is so hard. And an editor or an agent can help you with the words. But you can't, I can't go in and draw your picture for you and fix up, but we can help you. So it's about your cool ideas. And that's why I created this course in the first place, because I know my students and my artists are so quirky and inventive and have fresh ideas. And coolly speaking, next week, I have 14 of my artists, which is a big number, are going to be taking my kid book pitch uh, with me for an intensive week. And they're going to be developing and I've been working with them individually too and consulting with them and they're really crushing it. We've already licensed a bunch of stories. So that's what we're doing. And I'm very excited and I do hope you join me. It's a very cool class in October. Um, and now I know you want to take all the courses. So do look at the bundles and save up to 40% off because then you can take everything. Um, it is hugely lucrative to write an illustrated picture book because you get both you're not splitting it with the writer illustrators you are the right the author and the illustrator so you get the full advance the full royalty bigger royalty number and you're you're, you're branding yourself in a bigger and bigger way if you get one book you probably then know how to write more and you do once you get it down you know this is what i'm telling my artists like some of them are like, wow, it has to be like linear. You know, will I have blobs, blobby worksheet to put in the story, blob in an order. And once you get that kind of structured, you understand, then take another cool idea and make another book. So, you know, I like to do that. It's the triple Capricorn. I like to structure everything for you. 
Okay, so did we get everybody? Um, we did. Oh, so I'm doing a giveaway of my course. I'm so excited. I'm not following my outline. Okay, so for my course, I mean, I teach all the courses with all these wonderful people, but this one I teach. And Zoe comes in for the reviews because she's an author. So how cool is that? And co-teaches with me. So I shouldn't say it's my course, our course. Um, and you get a 123 page downloadable workbook, but you only get a chunk uh, twice a week. You get it, we add on to the chunk. So we don't overwhelm you. And magic cards, you get my magic cards. I'll be doing a new set for it this year. Guessing game. Okay, type in a color because that's what I do. <laughs> it's too fast. And it starts with P. Oh, I saw it. Um, Good. Who was that? Oh, where is it? I know I saw it. <laughs> I believe in it. It went so fast. It has to be spelled correctly. Oh, it just, okay. Oh my First God. It it correctly, it's called Zoom user, so. Okay, uh, I found one. Okay, good. Abigail, to host and panelist. She didn't do it to everybody, I see. Abigail Puce, P-U-C-E, Puce, Abigail. Yay, Abigail. So write to hello at makeartthatsells.com and say that you won um, my kid book pitch. Okay. So now don't forget the spring sale ends tomorrow. Don't dilly dally. You know, you're going to take the courses. Don't pay full price a month from now when you know you could get, get the 20, 30, 40% off. Uh, okay, should Beth, what should we do now? Pop somebody up? I think we should pop someone up and get them to ask whatever they want to ask, seeing as you've got everyone gathered. What a chance. Okay. And we can show your site or whatever. So uh, raise your hand in the raised hand section. And let's pick somebody. How about, oh my God, there's so many. Uh, Jenny Eden, and I just picked psychically, by the way, Jenny Eden, where'd she go? Jenny Eden, allowed to talk. Do you find Hi. And, Hello. And we show your, um, show your video. Oh my goodness, my video. <laughs> Hang on, I'm just trying to work it out. <laughs> Do we promote um, it to panelists, Kim? Um, I'm trying. It's not. I don't know. For some reason. Join as a panelist. Yep. Oh, it's come up. Join as a panelist. Okay. That's I did that. I hope that's okay, Kim. Yeah, that's great. I actually have to go, Lila. So are you okay to? Oh, I am. Thank you okay. so much. You've got agenting to do. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Kim. So is she here? Are you here, darling? Oh, I think we might have lost her. She's muted. Jenny, you're muted. Don't gosh, see. sorry. I'll stop Jenny. video. Oh, oh here. Oh. Okay. And Beth, Margo, and Tamisha, you're muted. So if you want, to... there she is. Hi. I'm so... I'm putting my son to bed. I'm so sorry. Oh, I didn't think I was going to get on. <laughs> and and where where do you live? I'm, I'm, I live in Worcester um, in the UK, um, just south of Birmingham in the West Midlands. Have you taken any maths I, classes before? No, no, I haven't. I've been looking at them and I, I've been wanting to take one. Oh, Thomas, don't turn the light off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this sorry. is unscripted. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, uh, my, my son has autism, so he just goes and turns things off or on and yeah uh, so um yeah so if he starts talking that's just you know he's just vocalizes as well Bless totally him. fine would you <laughs> like to ask us a question or would you like us to look at your website or instagram what would you like jenny 
Um, you look at my Instagram. Uh, I'm uh, Je Jenny Eden Illustration. Um, I've been wanting to um, do sorry, my surface pattern. I'm sorry to sorry. interrupt. So tell me uh, your your website. Um, I'm on Instagram, Jenny Eden Illustration. I've not long set it up, so there's J E N N Y. Yeah, and then E double D E N. Illustration. Oh, here we go. Okay, and I'm going to share the screen. This is cool. Is this not so cool, people? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Look at you being here. It's so great. Okay. So we have, let's scroll through and I want our guests to take a look. Well, I know whose number this is, Margot Tanto. <laughs> I just see potential immediately. It's how it works. Yeah, lovely. Can you turn up Thank your you volume so a little bit? Sure. Is that better? Oh my Hold goodness. On. Yeah. Beautiful. So just just looking at the overall uh, entire um, grouping, I, there's great pattern. You there's good use of elements. Like in this penguin, there's little penguins. There's the back of the penguin. There's the front. There's the little sprig of greenery, and you've got your that beautiful overhead of them swimming. So one of the cool things about um, patterns for home decor or things for home decor is is breaking it up and not using the same exact thing over and over again so it's great to have an element a couple of different patterns maybe some borders um, and i can tell you're already thinking that way i think you would have a lot of fun learning more i even love second row down in the middle that watercolory stripe those colors are gorgeous yeah oh, thank you so much yeah really yes. really interesting i think those are very saleable patterns already. Really? Oh yeah. my goodness. I yeah. was actually in my garden. I, I was I was recovering from COVID mm. and my um my husband was working upstairs. So I was trying to keep away from everybody in the garden. We had quite some quite nice weather here um in in March, end of March. So I was just out in my garden just copying lots of little bits and pieces and getting bits of wood that we had um, piled up in the garden to, to have a little drawer and paint. And I just got everything out. The whole mm. garden table was covered with stuff just Wonderful. to do. It's, it's what it's all about, just kind of organically mm -hmm. digging in. When you see the storyboards for the course, it's that's it. You just sort of just meditate with it, lose yourself in it and organically um, kind of see what comes out. Lovely. Yeah, and what yeah. you want to do is you want to take this, your patterns, you take this and you put them in a way that is going to sell to a company. So maybe this will be on a big pillow and it'll have embroidery and tassels and in color. Oh, wow. And then this little print is maybe uh, on the other side of the pillow or the border. So you begin yeah. to really utilize all that you're showing in a way that um, markets it in an actual product. So what you've begun to do here, but this could be so amped up, you so could have amped. one of the flowers really big and then take the rest, make a repeat pattern and put yep. it on there. Embroider one of them like on your bed, the, make the pillowcases a different yeah. color. You know, you could really have some fun there. One thing um, we I, teach um, over and over is don't repeat so cha and change the scale. So maybe yes. this becomes a tinier pattern and this is a big, huge flower in black yes. and white. That sounds really gorgeous. I, I, I actually, I, I, I was doing some um, other work before, before this um, when my children was, were smaller and I used to uh, decorate um, jute bags and sell them at craft fairs and things. So I'm I've, I'm very I'm very good at well I don't I'm not saying I'm very good that's like blowing my own trumpet um I, I do a lot of sewing um and um it's um, Jenny Eden designs um if you want to look at that one as as well um on Instagram um 
and yeah I, I do a lot of embellishing and things and make out flowers and all sorts but I got a bit kind of stuck in a rut with that and wanted to get back to doing circus pattern really. Oh, okay I love your line quality and I, I think you should do a lot more with that it's very special yeah 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 this is really nice stuff um I but but I want to get back to this because what yeah. you have going um where is that one I love the this is right really there. really beautiful line quality do more That's of it thank you. draw a range of oh, things thanks. get reference photographs yes. of butterflies moths different kinds so you begin to tell more show more different kinds of leaves and patterns and so forth yes the length of the the butterfly wings and colors yes. yeah i, I yes. think what i was trying to do as well because i i did a, a domestic of course and um someone said it is suggested this tutor suggested watch some documentaries like you know some david attenborough ones mm -hmm. and just draw what you're seeing on the screen just draw it just spontaneously draw to get mm -hmm. the movement to just capture the moment yes, sure. yeah so um so that's what i was doing for for, for some of it yeah um, like with the penguins definitely definitely i was watching the same scene over and over again and then just go right i'm just going to just keep drawing and then i'm just going to pick em elements of it oh, it's yes. Us. <laughs> yes well also i want to tell you before we we let you go because i mm -hmm. hear your kid needs you um is that if you use a photograph you can really study more detail yes so mo the movement is good for flow but but get in there with photographs so okay. um, Beth, what should should we uh do a little of our magic here um shall i just pull a message for jenny twitter for now and um should we, we should we gift her something absolutely why not okay oh what should, so why don't I think, we i think it should be in decor with margot <laughs> Yes, and let's sorry, sorry, sorry. Says, bravely market your magic. Oh, oh. that's what you meant. I didn't... Oh, I'm sorry, Beth. I thought you said you were going to text or something. I, I, I stepped no, on no, your no. whole send thing. A, send a little message, bravely market oh. your magic, which you'll be able to do brilliantly when you've been under Margot's wing. So enjoy oh, that. Send a message to hello at makeupatsales.com and the news will get you sorted. Okay. Okay. Hello. hello. You, yes. Yes, yes, thank you so oh, no. much. Thank oh, I'm so, oh, thank you so much. Like, it means such a lot. I'm so, so excited. I'm you so have excited. a lot of ability and you just need to keep making work and learn how to make it applicable. You've yes. got some beautiful line quality, a great taste level. You just need more. You just need yes. to do more. I don't always say that because I mean. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was so lovely. Thank you. It's so lovely talking to you guys as well. It's so nice. I'm so excited. Oh my God. That's great. So I, I need to. I need to send a message to. Tell me the the um. It's email hello, again. hello at makeartthatsells.com. Hello at makeartthatsells.com. Yeah. You can find it on the, probably on the website too. Okay. Contact maybe. Oh, no. okay. Louise just popped it in the comments so you can have a look. There. Okay. Oh, excellent. Thanks oh, so much for that. Please. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm so excited. <laughs> so great. Oh, I don't know if we need to turn the camera off, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, okay. All right. I'm I'm going to I'm just going to try and gather myself together. So I'll just uh, say goodbye. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> bye. Oh, thank you. Bye bye. Oh, that's pretty great. Do you love our jobs? This is what yes. we do. Gonna hang out with everybody oh, as well. Do you think we've got time for one more question? Sure, fine with me. My my hubby doesn't get home for about two hours, and he's going to want to hear everything. 
Well, my, so, my baby should have been in bed an hour ago, so I will have to go in a moment, but <laughs> let's try and no, get one more one. It's very different when you have kids, which I use, I, I mean, I still have them, but they're grown. Okay, um, so let's take another raised hand person. Oh, I think I just raised my own hand. Kim, <laughs> where are you? Okay, I can do this. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> okay, Annette Kraus. Annette Kraus. Let's put Annette in there. Um, Hi, Annette. Annette and talking permitted. Oh, it's Annette. I know her work. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Annette, are you able to come uh. on the screen? Annette. Oh, here we go. Promote to panelist. Okay. So click on that. She Okay, she'll be here any second. And we'll look at her whatever she wants. And we will then. Here we go. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. Where are you, Annette? Where are you? I'm in Seattle, Washington. Oh, it's Seattle day today. Yeah, sounds like nice it. to see you. Nice to see you. Are you in my year? I am not this year. I have been in the past, but not. Okay, that's good because if you were, we couldn't really give you anything. <laughs> so, um, and we want to be Oprah. So shall we look, do you have a question for us? Should we look at your work? I would love it if you could look at my website. <laughs> Okay. Or my Annette. Instagram, but preferably my website, which is AnnetteKraus.com. AnnetteKraus.com. Um, okay. And let me share the screen. Okay. Boom. Boom. Okay. So, you know, I teach a course, Portfolio Review Live, where I do talk about what to put what what to do how to make a great website what to put on it i think i have that in my queue i need to uh okay crack, crack that open yes and so for those of you wanting to uh learn about that so let's first take a stroll um i love that right away you see a bunch of her images she has categorized them on here with tabs uh, versus up here, either way is fine. Your goal is to just make the work very quick for an art director to see. This is how fast we scroll, agents and art directors. I know this from Tamisha's <laughs> class. I love that class so you much. This, Tamisha? Tamisha? Oh, 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 she's over there. Hi. I, I, yeah, that was gorgeous i remember that piece it was so much fun <laughs> yes. i really enjoyed that course so much tamisha i think i grew so much more in that class just oh, that why do you think you did um well i i've been doing editorial illustration for 25 years you know plus and uh i looked at my work and you know can curate it too but it wasn't reflecting um you know, it was, it, it needed to be broadened. And Tamisha, you, you did that for me. You really kind of opened up my, well, I learned a lot in your class historically, but um, as far as just representing um, all ethnics, all colors, races, work, background, you name it. It was just, it was really an enriching class. I really feel, you know, that I really, uh, I needed it, but I also um, enjoyed it so much too. And in the way that you you approached the history of it all it was really fun, enlightening, inspiring. I mean, I just that was such a fun way to go through the winter, you know, because it was uh, yeah. early in the year. Yeah, thank you so much. And I remember your work. Your work stood out to me. It's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. work this one. I you. love your style that you picked up too while creating work. I love to see more images like this. Of Me all too. Yeah, it's this is your best work. This is going to get you book cover work and book interior work and picture book work. Okay. Even maybe home decor with some of, you could easily get into print and pattern. I see you beginning yeah. to, 
your yeah. color palettes here are much stronger uh -huh. too than your the some of the other work and i love where you're going um let's go back okay i would agree oh. with that actually i think those pieces that um we were just looking at they just immediately i can just see how they would get picked up for the um children's non-fiction trends that we have going on here uh -huh. um, yeah they're just the character so much warmth in, in how you illustrate even though they're not children in the pictures, they're really um, accessible for children and really aspirational. Oh, I think they're good. really strong, oh, beautiful work. And just the details, I love how you've considered all of the like the labeling here, the hand lettering on the Elizabeth Catlett label is beautiful, right through to all the tools and the cat making that contact, looking up at the sculpture, which as, a, as someone who looks at art all the time, it's telling a story. For me in one piece. It's well, really I probably confusing. learned that from you in all the classes that I've taken from those classes. Oh. <laughs> you, know, you know, the comments that you make when you critique other people's work too, that stuff sinks in and it's oh, really good. effective and really helpful. Good. Yeah. Well, it shows in this piece. It's absolutely stunning. And I think Lilith's right. This is this is really strong work for you and you should have it up front in your portfolio. Definitely. Okay. All right. Yeah. Beth Thank you. wanted to say something. I was just going to ask why it's not on your the front of your website. Ah, that's a good point. I, I just hadn't updated. I was in there yesterday updating some of my latest um, printed pieces that just got in uh, Charleston magazine. I just did a piece. And, you know, when they send you the um, the magazine, that's, you know, that's in South Carolina. That's got to come across the country to me. And so I got it a little late and you, you go through it. And I thought, well, I'll throw that one up there. But I need to keep my strongest stuff up. Uh, above the fold I suppose always mm. it's all about curation it's taste level yeah rather than current maybe more strong rather than being the most your, current stuff current doesn't matter it's your yeah. best work okay Riley or Margo I was just going to say Annette I remember your work and I quickly went into the Facebook group and pulled up two of your pieces can I share screen yes yes, yes. okay thank you Ken that was such a fun course too. As as everyone knows, I'm I'm kind of addicted to maths. Like, can't stop. <laughs> so uh, when I saw you pop on, I'm like, I remember in that. Oh, uh huh. Um, this that you did for Dodo Island, and then this that you did for I think it was last year's yeah boot camp. It was like I don't know if it was a maths prep, but I instantly I like the fact that I can see quickly your like your palette really pops. I didn't expect to see one in pink and light aqua. Love it. I okay. love this. This. Um, I had a lot of fun with that. I time did. machine. And the fact that you did this white outline, I could instantly see these as stickers. Uh-huh. And I, even your lawn chairs. I just love your little <laughs> lawn chairs. I really wasn't sure what to do with those yet because it's kind of in, in, in progress yet. I haven't really finalized it yet well you'll you. you'll That's do something with them so i just wanted to commend you. like when i saw you i'm like i remember her work and the reason i remember it is because it was bold um and it was kid very you know obviously thanks riley thank you that was a lot of fun i enjoyed that one too um That's great it's great i think your oh. rings really strong too and make those oh. lawn chairs into a fabric collection oh, oh. I, okay bingo That's great idea margo that's great i got margo <laughs> that's why she's margo yeah i love that idea oh totally very agree. cool thank you so much well that's should we do nice a quick to career tarot for her and then yeah okay and that, are you joining boot camp later in the year i i am in boot camp later in the year and i'm also in margo's later in the year too so, so can i ask you that. why you are a serial maths junkie for anyone who's <laughs> Um, like not sure about signing up. Can you tell us why you, you do come to all the classes? Is it like um, motivation, accountability? I, all of that, all of the above. Um, you know, I, as I was saying, I, I've been illustrating since, since about 1986. I started as a, um, a staff illustrator at newspapers. So I've wow. worked in New York and then we moved to Seattle about 25 years ago. And I was always a staff illustrator. And then I had my first 
you know, my first baby and I was like, I'm going freelance and, and uh, did that for a long time. But the, uh, you know, the portfolio pieces just got a little stale. And so when I found Matt's and found Lilla, and by the way, Lilla, I, um, I used to art direct for Microsoft years ago. And I used to get your postcards at my studio <laughs> because, you know, you get these art directors names and I would, that's how I found you is through wow. your postcards when I was working as an art director part-time um, for a, an online woman's magazine, which was super fun. And it was perfect and right down the alley for your roster of illustrators, you know? So it was perfect for that. Um, but then uh, when I found you for the classes, it, it just kind of uh, sparked an interest, but it, it, it broadened my portfolio and it gave me, it gave me some uh, trendier, more unique, fun pieces that appealed to a larger uh, mass of audience and uh, kind of diversified me and gave me a different revenue streams, which was really important as far as- Oh, great. That's and, so great. Yeah. yeah. I think you're really speaking to some- Oh, here's the Feed best your part. artist. Feed yeah. your artist. Maybe that's why you keep coming back because you have to keep feeding her. Don't yes. You? Yeah. That could that's be. I'm so writing spot that on. Down. Yeah, you're speaking to something. You know, if you want career longevity, if you want to be doing this a long time, you have to get excited and evolve and be inspired. Get new input. You can't just you can't just pour out. You got to take in, and you can't just take in. You got to pour out. In other words, you have to be inspired and you have to produce. Yeah. And if one's out of, if you just keep producing, the well one runs dry. And if you just keep getting input and looking at Instagram all the time, but not producing, you get constipated. <laughs> I had a wonderful conversation with one of my artists, Sarah Walsh, uh, about her story for the kid book, for the residency we're doing next week. And she has more graphic terminology regarding that whole um, uh, thing. And, <laughs> but it's true, you know, and you have to, uh, you, and, and, and so Tamisha's class really did something for you. Yeah. I love it. It's very strong and you obviously are inspired. And I would just keep making more pieces and okay. whatever worked there keep going that the yeah. color palette the way you render okay. the softness the detail and what zoe said about the interaction i loved hearing that what you learned in zoe's class and zoe has like registered trademark patent the eye connection between the characters mm -hmm. that and shadows mm -hmm. that's her thing <laughs> yeah her thing. that's right and then you translate it over to that over to tamisha's class yeah i mean somehow it just kind of sticks in there, it infiltrates. So, you know, you're learning, even though you're not really aware of all the things that are coming through through each course. Um, but if you're paying attention and I don't, I'm not one for often for taking notes, but I, it, the reviews are just so rich that the information that's coming through, it just gets in there and it does apply to your other parts of your aspects of your life, of your world, even the things that you might notice when you're out shopping and looking at at uh, home decor. I mean, I, I handle home decor completely different than I used to as far as when I'm walking through one of my favorite shops. I'm just, I have Margot's voice <laughs> it's on my shoulder because <laughs> I can hear what she might have probably said in class or even in the toy store with Raleigh, the same thing. It's, they're all really rich and they just, um, you know, so if you're thinking about taking a Matt's course, take it. I sent one to a friend today, just the link for her, her daughter um, <clears throat> is thinking about pursuing art. And she says, can she come shadow at your house? Can she come in your studio and take, and I'm like, of course, but you know, don't wait till then. So I sent her your link today, Lilla, because right. of the sale that you're having. I'm like, don't wait to come see me start right away. You know, oh, that's so nice. So. Thank you. Uh, Beth. Should we gift her something? Should we yeah, ask her what I'd love to. Um, I'm also conscious of your time this year, Annette. Yeah. So, um, what, what would be most useful to you? Um, would you like to bring a friend on one that you already booked onto? 
That's a very good point. Um, wow, let me think about that for a minute. Okay. Um, well, you don't have to answer now. You drop oh. an email to Louise. Okay. Hello at Make Art That Sells. Thank them. you so much. That's lovely. I mean, I feel like it would be nice for me to uh, pay it forward to someone. You know? Yeah, but what are you taking right now? I'm taking, well, I'm in the character boot camp right now. Right. I'm uh, taking a home decor with uh, uh, Margot. Is that August or September? August. August. Into September. Uh huh. Okay. And then, uh, oh, and then boot camp starts in August too. Is that? Yes. That right? yeah. My boot camp in August. Well, it, that leaves the writing class if you're interested. Oh, yeah. I would like to do that. Yeah. Well, that's good timing. My kid book pitch. And, and that's in October. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I have a book that I, I've been working on. And so this is your writing course, right? Well, in yes. illustration class. Okay. Yes. I found that one too. Okay. That would be great. Oh my God. I mean, you can also illustrate a couple of spreads and yeah. then <clears throat> sketch out a dummy, but it's getting that story, that text down. Yeah. I have a question for you since I got you online. Can I ask it? And it's about yeah. writing. It's Yes. And about the book industry, since I have Zoe here too. My, um, Beth, my, uh, yes, with, the, um, with Beth and with Zoe for children's book. My sister passed away about 12 years ago and left me with three, um, three books, three children's books, just, you know, the preliminary writings of them. And one of them is about our childhood together because we were very close, you know. So if I were to take that and to rep, uh, present that to a publisher, because it's pretty polished at this point, I've been working on it and I'm ready to go. How do I, who do I give credit to in that? Like, how do you handle something like that? If it's kind of her words, but I experienced them too, because I was her sibling and I want to, I want to get this book out into the world for my sister. Ooh. And I well, want to illustrate it, you know, so. But I think you would do a traditional dummy like we talk about in illustrating children's books so you would want to do a couple of sample spreads and maybe a thumbnail a set of thumbnails for the whole book and maybe what you think the cover would be mm -hmm. and then so you'd approach it in that way that we talk about it in terms of credit there's no reason why your sister it was your sister right it was my sister yeah your sister can't be credited alongside Perhaps there is a family member that you would, that the publisher, if they commissioned it, would direct that almost like her estate. If there's somebody oh. in that family member, they might direct it like that to right. her. Right. Okay. Um, if you feel that she gave them to you to take forward, you could probably put them under your name and write something that goes within the book, either in the forward or in the, at the end, that I'd explains like that. about your sister mm -hmm. and, um, and so it's got more of a personal message and meaning throughout. Does right. that help? Uh-huh, it totally helps. I just was hoping, um, you know, for legal purposes too, how would they handle that? Or how would her children, like her, her kids are grown now, um, you know, if we give credit to Barb as the writer and me as the illustrator, um, how do we, you know, that's all kind of, they can figure that out, in other words. Yeah. They well, first of all, okay. your publisher is going, <clears throat> this won't be the first time for yeah. them. Your publisher will guide you. That is a minor detail. Great, great. And like Zoe said, <laughs> if they make payments to whoever manages the estate or maybe mm -hmm. to you, don't worry about that. That's a yeah. minor detail. Yeah. You yeah. want to get that story so well crafted and gorgeous the words and then the visuals and uh -huh. then you're ready to go so yeah well that well, good luck fire under my fanny with that class to get that done you know or, or get yeah. at least get it really polished so i would feel more confident getting it out there so i will yeah. be looking that's for you perfect. in class oh all, gosh i can't wait all the winners oh that's wonderful wow <laughs> so much everyone <laughs> What an amazing two and a half hours this has been. Thank you so much to everyone who stayed with us. Um, if you missed, if you turned up late and you missed the details, the makeupthatsells.com sale is on um, until tomorrow, I think. So 
yep. can hang around <laughs> if you know you're going to buy a course at some point in the year it's not going to get cheaper than this at this point in the year so mm -hmm. um if you want to take any of the classes we've been talking about today all the information's there there's this beautiful sale guide that it is showing you there which you can download from the website and fill in and doodle on and make beautiful um, and you can also get yourself a bargain so um, if you want to feed your artist over the coming months um, pop over to makeupthesales.com and find whatever is good for you thank mm. you so much Annette thank you everyone thank amazing you. super team how blessed we are to have all of you with us on the Make Up The Sales team and thanks for hosting us Lilla today you know I was just well, Annette was talking, I was just looking at this and I, you know, I wanted to take a screenshot and preserve this. But I'm sure the maths team did. Like, how extraordinary is this moment that we're together zooming this level of teaching talent and these students who are so devoted and so inspiring to us. It's really extraordinary that we have this opportunity. So thank you everybody for being here. Really so appreciate behind the scenes it. team as well who've been in the comments who keep everything running and support all our students. Yes, I forgot to say I'm teaching boot camp in August, September, October. We mentioned that briefly, but if you don't know what else to take, that's a great intro to three markets and three. It's it affordable and it's fun. And I've already written August and it's so cool. And I have more up my sleeve. So I just want to say that it's a good place to start. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Zoe and Riley and Beth and Margo and Tamisha. It's been really wonderful to have you. And um, I can't wait to teach with all of you. So everybody get Thank a lot you. of rest. Thank we'll you. see you very soon. Thank you, Bye, people. Everyone. Bye. Bye.